you know, as far as the fireworks go and as far as underdogs go, uh, the, the next fight, Kai Kara France uh, defeated Cody Garbrandt. First round TKO cashes on at plus 130 on the money line, plus 340 by TKO. Inside the distance, three to one odds. The under two and a half rounds cashed at minus 110. Fight goes the distance, no, at minus 145. And uh, yeah, uh, Lucky Locks, did you have anything on this one? What did you think about this one? So my initial read on this was Kai Care friends KO, but I, I just couldn't get to the window on it. And I wish I did because the fight looked a lot kind of like what I thought it was going to look like. Obviously, I'm not going to glow it. I didn't put my money where my mouth is, so uh, can't can't brag or anything like that. But uh, I honestly didn't think Cody was a bad bet when the line kept coming down. But I just, you know, I, I can't lay chalk on Cody Garbrandt, especially in a new weight class and especially in a lower weight class. Um, I don't really think that highly of Kai Car France in general. I mean. I don't think he's one of the better guys in the flyweight top 10. I feel like there's a bunch of guys ranked behind him that I would actually pick to beat him. Um, I definitely don't think he should get a title shot after this. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good performance for him, and he did what he had to do. Uh, definitely, I think it was a good bet for everyone that uh, that, that bet Kai Car France here. I think it was a sharp spot. Um, but, yeah, tough for Cody, man. Unfortunately, uh, the thing is, if you can't take a punch, you can't win the fight. Everything else just goes out the window if your chin's not there. And uh, he's 1-5, and five and in, in his last six, he's been KO'd four times. And I don't really know what's next for him. I mean, he has enough name value to continue on, but who knows? I mean, he's going to kind of have to take a, a hard look at, at what he really wants, and I'm sure that the UFC is going to be taking a hard look at what they really want to get out of Cody Garbrandt going forward as well. But uh, good performance for Kai Car France. Don't want to take anything away from him there. And uh, good bet for everybody that was on that side. Yeah, I was definitely on that side. This is one of my very few uh, high spots. And uh, with the win, Kai Car France, he improves to 6-2 and two since coming into the UFC in 2018. And he's only turned a profit of like 1.75 units on the money line in that stretch. So even with this big underdog win, he's kind of he's come in as a massive favorite in a lot of fights. Uh, so yeah, big win, Liam. Uh, we talked about this one. I was pretty adamant on it. And uh, what did you think about this one? Yeah, and so uh, my regret here was that I wasn't uh, in range to legally bet on that uh, line at plus 150 while we were talking about it uh, because I thought that uh, Kai Car France at plus 150 was a great spot. Um, you know, by the time I had taped the fight in full and was ready to drive to Jersey, get my bets in, uh, you know, I just, I didn't want to get in when the line movement had already gone so far against me. You know, there had already been a, a pretty big adjustment on that side. And I saw that they were hanging plus 360, Kai Car France to win by KO, TKO on FanDuel. So that's where I got involved on this fight. Um, thought that that was a pretty good spot. You know, my prediction going in was Garbrandt to win a decision here. And I thought that if he was able to survive over the course of 15 minutes, uh, you know, he did have faster hands, it looked like to me. Uh, but he was getting backed up a lot. His lateral movement wasn't saving him. He couldn't get his back off the fence. And, you know, like Lucky mentioned, if you can't take a punch, you can't win a fight. It's very tough. Uh, and so I just felt like, it's an auto bet on the KO line for somebody dropping down uh, 10 pounds from 35 to 25. Very hard cut to make, um, especially, you know, Cody did not look like a small man. And on top of that, if you have durability concerns about somebody, uh, taking a ton of water out of your body is not an answer uh, to a durability problem. Um, it, it can only exacerbate it. So, Wanted to get involved on in the KO line. My regret is that I didn't go bigger. My regret is that I wasn't, um, you know, looking at the lines ahead of time and getting involved in that Kai Car France, uh, you know, money line underdog bet at plus 150. I feel like that was a great spot. Uh, salute everybody who got it. And great read by you as well there, Al. Yeah, it, you know, flyweight, uh, this does not happen in flyweight very often. Uh, Kai Car France is just the 12th underdog at flyweight since 2020 to come through and just the 19th since 2019 and uh i yeah it's for me i had a feeling this is going to happen just because cody dropping to flyweight and doing so kind of rushing into it i thought he should have taken like a year off before moving down and he looked okay as far as like technique goes but uh, yeah, he even did a good job actually of getting back into the fight after getting dropped the first time. 
I think that this is equal parts Kai Kara France uh, re- having just a really good night that just with precision and accuracy and Cody's lack of chin dropping down to 125. Uh, so, yeah, this was one of the few high points for me. I wish I put more money down on Kai Kara France uh, as I did. You know, I kind of I, I I, I was more staunch just in my word than I was with my wallet uh, and going out on a limb uh, saying he was going to go and get the get the win. Um, is Kai Kara France going to get a, a title shot after this? I don't think so. And I think that that's kind of ridiculous. And also like Dana White, he said, Kai Kara France said that he won't fight until his next fight is for a title shot. And you never, ever, ever want to say that in the UFC because if you wait out fights he's fighting in Bellator next then That's yeah you're, you'll be fighting yeah um uh, one thing I will say I DC mentioned uh Kai Kara France fighting Manel Cape and first of all that's just ridiculous because Kai Kara France is uh you know up there in the rankings and Manel Cape still hasn't I don't even think he has a win over a ranked fighter in flyweight so what they should do is feed Cody Garbrandt to Manel Cape because I think that that would be a decent fight and maybe Manel Cape can get a a win uh but besides that I don't really know what Cody Garbrandt's going to do I, he he's got name value but he's got to go back up to bantamweight because it's going to be it's going to be lights out it's going to be lights out for him uh, if if he fights another guy. Like if I, I feel like if he were to fight a guy like uh, Nicolau or Pantoja or something like that, he would get hurt. And uh, yeah, the, again, I I kind of feel like I kind of feel like th- this might be a benefit to fade Kai Kara France uh, in the next fight. What do you think about that, Lucky Locks picks? I uh, fade Kai Kara France. You- I'm sold. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's just not a guy that I'm high on, like, at all, to be honest with you. Uh, um, I feel like he's got a pretty good streak of good luck. And, I mean, I'll give him credit. He looked great tonight. He had a great night, like, as you mentioned. But, uh, yeah, going forward, I mean, this guy's ranked number six in flyweight, and I just don't personally feel like he, he's on that level. There's a couple guys ranked behind him that I would feel pretty comfortable backing against him. Yeah, and he's had some uh... – I, 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 I recall he was like a minus 300 favorite against Moreno and got stopped by Moreno. What do you think about that, Liam? Do you think, uh, um, <laughs> you know, what do you, do you think he's going to get the title shot next? No, I don't think he's <laughs> going to get the title shot next. Um, I think that it would be an undeserving title shot. Um, this was a good and critical, important win for his career. Um, for Kai Car France, obviously the biggest win of his career. And he delivered in a big spot, you know, opening up. Uh, like, he came out the gates on fire, dialed in, ready to win that fight. And so you got to give him a lot of credit there. But you just got to temper expectations a little bit as well. Um, because Kai Car France, he's kind of, uh, I, I thought it was very predictable, the Roy Val fight, by example. Uh, he kind of just gets a little bit overexcited and against somebody like Cody that, that paid off it paid dividends uh, today, but he's gotten excited in the same fashion and run into a spinning back elbow uh, and gotten knocked out or if not knocked out, he got submitted in that same fight because he was completely rocked. So I just feel like he's liable to make mistakes. Garbrandt just wasn't the guy to make him pay, uh, especially when he was already on shaky legs. Yeah, I think that this is going to be a, a a good spot to like, you know, just take advantage of. I feel like people are going to see, you know, the MMA casual betters are going to see Kai Kara France get this big win over a name like Cody Garbrandt. So we might be able to get a, you know, if if he were to, you know, fight fight a top top ten guy or sorry, a top five guy, someone higher up in the rankings uh, at flyweight, like I said, like a Pantoja or something like that, even an Asker Askarov, I believe maybe those guys have already fought, but it, it, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm all on, you know, fading, uh, Kai Kara France who, who, yeah, you know, he definitely had a good, uh, a good showing tonight, but, uh, it, it's kind of, it's kind of like in this, what have you done for me lately business of betting? It's always good to, 
uh, you know, kind of go against the narrative like like we did here because I thought, again, I, I have no idea why Cody Garbrandt was the favorite here. You know, as far as a, a, like a true betting line, Cody should have been the underdog, right? Like that's, you know, that that's just how I feel. But yeah.